Good morning. Welcome to University United Methodist Church. It's wonderful to have you here today. And I will ask the quick questions so we can get this out of the way. What's the score of the Chiefs game? Chiefs? Chiefs are ahead, 21 to nothing. They will be in our prayers today. <laughs> so here we are. This is our time where we pause in the church year and we remember. We remember those saints that have gone before us within our community, those that have gone before us within our families, and those that have gone before us as friends. Those that taught us, those that tried to teach us. And we will find a time during worship as you come up for a communion. There will be a star here for you to pick up. It's like a little paper mache star. And I encourage you to take one and put it somewhere. This year it may be the timing's good to put it on your Christmas tree. Or you can hang it somewhere where you can see it at all times. Remembering those that we've loved and we've had to let go of. Those that have been in our lives and served a role. And maybe it will encourage us to step up to a younger generation and help teach them and lead them in our time here. So as we begin today, we're going to sing This Is The Day as our welcoming song. Joe, you want to start us on that one? You bet. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let we will rejoice. We will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. And keep that beat going as you stand up and greet your neighbors and say good morning. I invite you to stand as you are able as we move our bodies from whatever was happening before into this sacred space of hope and healing and courage. Will you say with me the words that are on the screen as we are called into worship? Holy God, holy and worthy, we meet you here in a messed up world, a twisted sense of justice and the pain of humanity. In such a space as this, we bring anger and hurt 
when with with these these gifts gifts we worship. And we will sing together hymn number 711 for all the saints. It's verses 1, 4, and 6. Those that are helping with our time of recognition for the saints that have gone before us, will you come forward now? Will you pray with me? We give you thanks, O God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses, where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands, used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hard-working saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, heads with ball caps or velvet fedoras, blue-collared or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. We remember and speak once more of those who have gone before us. Carl Nardine, Dot McNichol, Mary Horn, Betty Portley. Friends, each of us hold memories of those who have gone before us. Please pick up a star and put it on your Christmas tree or hang it in a window or place it where you will see it each day. Remember with love and grace. Remember with laughter and tears. Remember that it is not the final story. We stand in hope of resurrection.
Please pray with me. Gracious living God, today we will come to your table, the table of grace, hope, reconciliation, and new possibilities. As we move to our meal, when you ask us to remember you, we'll also remember those who have gone before us. We will remember those who have provided for us and cared for us, those who built the churches, schools, and the community we enjoy today. We will take these stars to remind us of your love and their love. They are much like the stars in the sky, are always there, but sometimes the daylight takes them from our view. We give thanks for the stars in the sky and the stars in our church that help us to remember our loved one for all time. Amen. This tends to be one of my favorite services in the church year because we really just pause and remember and that know that it's so many thousands of candles that could be lit here because that's the space we step into when it is the joy of remembering those that helped those that just stepped in and did the right thing for us at the right time it's a challenge it's a challenge for us to know how to respond to the world but maybe we need to use that as an example i invite you to pray with me O oh God, with hearts full of gladness, we sing your praise. God of mercy and compassion, you soothe the afflicted, you comfort the sorrowing, and you bind up the brokenhearted. With hearts full of gladness, we sing your praise, God of peace and justice. You raise the lowly, you hear the silent, you champion the oppressed. When we, ch when we close our hearts to those most needing out your love, when we keep close our minds to helping others, when we keep our arms locked by our sides instead of reaching out. Oh, God of love, forgive us. When we shut our ears to the voices of the vulnerable, we'll remain silent in the face of injustice. When we look the other way, preferring not to get involved, oh, God of love, please forgive us. Into the silence, we open our hearts as we confess our own shortcomings. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Into the silence, we ask for courage in addressing our fears. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. And into the silence, we celebrate with joy the gifts we see in those around us. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. With open hearts, yet raw with grief, we honor and remember Carl, Dot, Mary, and Betty. They made our lives better. We pray for hope, healing, and courage for Teddy, Ernest, Marty, Todd, Clifton, Steve, Joel, Jackson, Doris, Dot, Marjorie, Opal, Sybil, Alice, Ruby, Lori, Maisie, and Donna. Open our hearts and open our minds, open our arms, and help us to walk your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
good, here comes Teddy. Otherwise, I was going to pull some of you out of the pews. <laughs> oh, Jane, two, two boys. <laughs> All right, Atlas is coming too. All right, so while you guys are getting settled, I will tell you that a lot of you know that I like hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have a new hat on this morning. This is the first time I've worn this hat. But even though I love this hat and I wore it this morning special, I'm going to take it off and put on a different hat this morning. So there we go. Do you know what kind of a hat this is? Have you ever seen a hat like this? It's a different, it's a halo, you're right out. Atlas, it is a halo. And do you know who wears halos? Have you ever seen anybody in a halo? Angels wear halos. And sometimes in pictures, I looked around the church this morning to see if we had any in, in, in the stained glass windows, but I didn't see any. But sometimes in pictures, you'll see Jesus has a, on a halo or his mother Mary or some of the people that they call saints. And that's what we're gonna talk about this morning is saints, because this morning is All Saints Sunday. Now, last time I talked to some of you guys last month, we talked about communion and how communion Sunday is a celebration. Well, this is communion Sunday, but it's another celebration too. It's a celebration of all saints. And just a minute ago, we talked about some of the saints from our church who have gone before us. And, um, and we said thanks for them. But do you know why it's called All Saints Sunday? It's because it's not just people who have died who are saints. It's everybody who follows Jesus. And so that means everybody here is a saint. Did you know you were a saint? Yeah. And maybe we can't see your halo all the time, but it's there, and we know that it's there because you love and follow Jesus. So can you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to be saints. And thank you for all the saints who have gone before us. We love you, God. We love you, God. Amen. Thank you.
Sue, would you come forward and give us some instructions about our morning today? You, a few th thoughts about what we're going to do with this. And uh, so I want to begin with people who may not know what Stewardship Sunday is about. It is the Sunday of the year when we give our pledge sheets, if you will. Um, and we'll do that out in the narthex. And um, there's a basket out there, and you can put your, um, your pledges in, or your pledge uh, sheets in there. There is a time that we do this, but that does not mean that you don't have an opportunity throughout the next uh, three, four weeks to turn in a pledge card if you've not already done it. And after church, we will have a fabulous um, set of food appetizers out in the, the gathering place and we want everyone to come and, and join us with that so please turn in your pledge cards and uh, and then stick around after church and we'll have we'll have enough food that you can get out of here full <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you sue so we're finishing up our uh, Old Testament um, time as we're, we're going to head into Advent very quickly. It doesn't seem possible, but it's going to be here before we know it. And today we're going to hear the scripture from Proverbs 31. Have you ever heard of Proverbs 31 before? Kind of feels like it might be a hard thing to live up to kind of thing. <laughs> let, let me read for you proverbs 31 verses 10 through 31 and it's going to be speaking of a woman these are all things that that are a, uh, a a description of a woman a woman of strength who can find she is far more precious than jewels the heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain she does him good and does not harm all the days of her life she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it's still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchants with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. That's not hard to live up to, is it? So maybe this isn't about a certain woman. Maybe this is not even about a life that could be achieved in this time. 
Or maybe this is an example for that which we are all called to, the ways that we reach out, the ways that people have reached out to us. And so having this on our uh, All Saints Sunday feels so appropriate to think about those who were in our lives that fulfilled many of these kind of roles for us. And now maybe it's our turn to take up the mantle and to stand in these places, offering this same kind of courage and strength and wisdom for all people. Now, when I get to a, a scripture like this, that is, a, you know, it's, it's not as clear cut as what you might seem, I go search out commentaries. And I read from Brett Strawn, and he's the professor of Old Testament and the professor of law at Duke University Divinity School in North Carolina, North Carolina. And he says these words, the wife in Proverbs 31 is not in the kitchen scrubbing dishes and biting her tongue. While she clearly takes care of her husband and the household and excels at domestic activities, she is quite active outside the home as well. She is a successful businesswoman considering a field and buying it. She is also a viticulturist. Anybody know that word? I had to look it up. You know about growing grapes. If that helps you ever in any games, let me know. If you win on Jeopardy because of the answer, let me know. She is a businesswoman who works late into the night and plans ahead. She is not idle. She knows how to dress for success and how to sell goods for a profit. Her work compares favorably to merchant marines, and one suspects that the reason her husband is well known is because of her. And she opens her hand to the needy and helps them. She speaks with wisdom, teaching of kindness. And there is some comparison here with her, with the woman of wisdom that we heard about earlier in Proverbs. And then I found that a professor of mine uh, have also had this commentary on Proverbs uh, 31 woman. It's Amy uh, uh, Odin, and she is with St. Paul School of Theology in Oklahoma City. And we got to know each other over Zoom back in those days. And this is what she said about this woman. Her virtue and worth are a result of her own agency, her actions, and her choices. She leads her own life rather than following someone else's. She pursues her own ends rather than obeying orders. There is no hint that her industry is not her own and that she is demure or deferential or that pers she pursues those that are directed by others. This is a woman that is in charge of herself. The writer praises her, pra her purposefulness and we might even say her headstrong ways. One of the things she points out is that this is very countercultural because this does not speak about a woman and her womb and that these good things are coming to her because she only has been blessed with children. She th there's a talk about teaching children, but there's not a talk about being only in that mother role. So that's a little different for us here. And last, there's nothing said about her physical appearance. In this day and age, can we just stay into that same proverb and just stop talking about people's physical appearance and giving them worth in that? Let's remember that they are people that have achieved things because of their wisdom. Maybe they've taken chances. Maybe good things have come to them. Those are all things. This, this is all countercultural to what we believe and what we see in others. And let's just think about what this might look like in our schools and in our communities, in our media, if women were honored for who they are and the gifts that they bring. I read this last night and I just thought this was profound. It says, we don't come to church to find God. We come to church to learn how to find God everywhere. Again, we don't come to church to find God. 
we come to church to learn how to find God everywhere. And so these are stories that I have heard over these last few weeks. People talking about encounters and how they worked out and what they felt like. There was a person in Walmart, the self-checkout line. She was a teenager, and she could not get her card to work. She was near tears. She had six large bags of rice that cost $19. I told her I would buy them. We hugged. I said, pay it forward someday when you are able. She said she would. I believe her. In Walgreens, a mom was with a sick baby, and she asked for help to find a cheap humidifier. I asked her to pick out the things she needed. We got to the checkout line, and I paid for her items. She cried and asked why, and I said, pay it forward. These are not my stories. These are stories that people have shared with me of stepping up, stepping in, offering a hand to someone in need. Years ago, a random guy handed me a $50 bill in the grocery store and told me to pay it forward. I needed the money so badly at that time. I have since paid it forward many times. Maybe if we loved more and judged less, this would be a better world. I stopped at a convenience store on my way to work, bought coffee, orange juice, milk, and breakfast sandwich. The last three went to the homeless man outside. I did it because I respected him. In the self-checkout at Walmart, the lady in front of me forgot her wallet. She was trying to get someone to come to void her purchase so that she could go home and get her wallet. I swiped my card. She couldn't believe it. It was such a small thing. I did it because of kindness. Kindness, that's who we heard about the Proverbs 31 woman. She wasn't perfect, even though the myth around her draws her into that, but she helped. She learned. She worked hard. She took risk. How are we as University United Methodist Church standing in that place of willingness to risk? What, what could we be? What might happen if we determine that we are like Proverbs 31, that we have something to offer into the world? Bishop Stephen Carlton says, somewhere in the days before us are answers, answers to what now eludes us, answers to what we need. Our job is to find those answers. In many ways, spiritual people are detectives. We search for the connection between intention and result. We follow the clues of the human heart. We examine the evidence of generation. And yes, over time, we discover solutions and blessings. And that's our job. If you have not yet seen Disney's Coco movie, I encourage you to find it this afternoon and watch it. The story about what happens into a family and throughout the generations, how they have lived because of a broken heart, and what it means for culturally to be able to learn from your ancestors. Now here's the really good, name, good news, is that there is not a Chiefs game on this afternoon, so you have time to watch the movie, okay? <laughs> Putting that in there. So what does it mean? What are, what are the answers and the questions we're looking for? Lots of them. <laughs> How does this mess turn out? When will peace be known? You know, earlier this week, we had gotten a challenge. We took it as a challenge. We accepted the challenge to buy 500 boxes of stuffing mix for open doors, put in the Thanksgiving food boxes. Man, it was like 500 bucks. That's a lot of stuffing. Well, it's not when you're making 2,400 boxes. So, this miracle upon miracle has happened within our congregation. We've already 
got more than enough in the 500 that we called back and really, if we could do 1,000, it would really help them a lot. Can we do that? Can we rise to the occasion and provide for somebody that we will never know, we will never see, or we may know very well, and we are helping them? If you would like to do that, we can take a, a cash offering for that. You can buy the boxes and bring them back here to the church. We need them by Thursday so that they can get down to open door and get used in the boxes. That's just one thing, one thing we could do. Another answer, because it's a question we've asked for a long, long time now, is about DART. This Thursday at 6 o'clock at, Un at uh, First United Methodist downtown will be the assembly. When we all come together, all the people that have been a part of this process for months and months and months now, we come together and decide where we're going to focus our energies. You need to be there. We need to be there. We will be carpooling here from the church. We'll leave at 5.30 if you need a ride, if you just want to follow along so you can get a good parking spot. And parking is an issue there, you know, heads up to that. Let's show up. Let's show up, University United Methodist Church. We can do this. We have an opportunity to vote this year. It's coming up Tuesday. It's important. These elections that don't get a lot of attention can certainly sway who we are in community very, very easily. Do your research and get out there and vote. And so I want to share with you these words. This is a prayer that was written for Bishop uh, Oscar Romero. He was assassinated in a service while he was serving communion. And this was written for him. It helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The kingdom is not beyond our efforts. It is beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetimes only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives include everything. This is what we are all about. This is what we are all about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water the seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future on our own. May it be so. Amen. The usher's going to come forward and accept our gifts that we give on this day. If you're wanting to put in something for uh, open door, uh, please mark that so that our counters will know how to uh, put that as they do their accounting today. And we are going to be singing hymn number 616, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast.
Will you pray with me the prayer of dedication that is on the screen? God, whose kingdom is of one of mercy, of justice, and of peace, we offer you ourselves, our voices, to speak for those who are silenced, our hands to raise up those beaten down, our hearts to love and to be your love in the world. Bless all that we offer, and so may your kingdom come. Amen. Thank you, ushers. And now we come to this feast that has been prepared for us. We serve a gluten-free cracker for the bread, and everyone will be given a small cup with the juice that you can take those together when you come forward. Our uh, communion stewards will be standing a little bit further down because we want you to remember to pick up a star as you come forward. You'll come up here and then there and then back around through on your side aisles. And so this table has not my place of hosting. This is not the church's place of hosting. This is Jesus Christ that has offered you to come and be welcomed, maybe an arm around the shoulder, a comfort for this meal that we will share together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Blessed are you, God of creation and all beginnings, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hope comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave us to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. And when the supper was over, he took up the cup, gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and for these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those that we name before you in our hearts. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Will those who are helping to serve communion come forward at this time? Because we are one body. And it was the one body that was broken for each and every one of us. And we are saved within this cup of salvation and hope. This which was given for us to do this again in remembrance of God. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us through the sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Will those that who have announcements to make come forward at this time? Well, I have a couple. First of all, I've been noticing that they've been um, advertising what they're going to have on Wednesday night. And Diane Stoker contacted me, so I'm cooking for this Wednesday. And I'm making homemade goulash. And for those of you who do not know what that is, basically, that is homemade hamburger helper. So <laughs> along, well, that's just about what it is, along with a, a veggie tray. Another thing is I want to invite you all this, next, this coming Sunday at CHUM, College of United Methodist at 3 o'clock, the Wichita Community Children's Choir will be doing their concert, giving thanks. And these children have worked really hard. Matter of fact, we just finished up last night um, with the Wichita Grand Opera singing La Boheme. And we had 18 of our kids in that um, production, and they were wonderful. So. Parking. <laughs> uh, if you'll notice, uh, we, I made up a new sheet. Uh, we use uh, what we call the square credit card reader. So I don't want to come up here and say we need square card readers, but we need square card readers. So this last column, if you know how to run the square, I'd appreciate for you to sign up. Because uh, I need at least one person that knows how to run it that night. But please, we still need volunteers. New vests are on the way because people were complaining there wasn't no pockets and they didn't want to wear the apron. Hey, we aim to please around here. <laughs> I even ordered a purple vest, just so you know. So they're different colors. So anyway, your help would be appreciated. Thank you. Looks like that's it. Let's join together in singing Forward Through the Ages, number 555. Stand as you are able, please.
a reminder that all are invited over to the gathering place right over here for a time of fellowship and celebration and giving thanks. As we are sent out into the world, this is our charge for this week. We go out from here knowing we are beloved children of God. We give thanks for our time together. Now we go into the world to bless others as we take the good news with us. May we know and share the love of God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit in our words and actions. And may we speak and act wisely in all things and in all days of our lives. Go in peace.